this session will be recorded. Okay, so you can see that I have given you a clear instruction that you are given 10 minutes to answer the question. Well, basically, these questions will not uh, take 10 minutes of your time. So normally, you can finish it less than five minutes. But why did I give you 10 minutes? Just, well, just in case if, let's say, you have internet problem, if, let's say, suddenly you are facing technical issues and everything. Just in case, and also for those who love to recheck the answer like a thousand times. So I gave you the plenty of times to do that. Okay, so let's submission, uh, you have to look at it carefully. Let's submission will not be graded. It means that for those who submitted after 10 minutes, even though one minute after 10 minutes will not be marked. Okay, so it is clear to me because I have given you extra time. So if you didn't submit it within the specified time, so I will not even uh, look at your answer, even though you got full mark. So remember, we have certain rules. Even though I'm very lenient in terms of marking, so I gave you like plenty of times. But once you have exceeded certain limit, so uh, rule applies. Okay. Um, email. So you have. Uh, madam. Uh, how to know uh, if we answer it on time? Then you have to set your time. You have your uh, watch, because look at it. Just now, uh, I answer it and then I'm actually in the middle of Tilawah test. So it interrupt me to answer oh, really? it back. I'm not so sure if it... In, you are in the middle of the test. So you have to let me know if that's it. It is like a, a clash with your test so that I can somehow reschedule it for you. Yeah, so basically you can just let me know about the issue. You shouldn't like force okay. yourself to, to, to join two tests together. Isn't it hard, right? So just for your case, because you are you were having your test just now to test, then um, if let's say you have sent it like after 10 minutes, just send your email, your, your, your uh, metric number so that I can recheck your uh, submission time, okay? That's okay, it. thanks madam. Okay, so next time, please uh, notify that if you have something, uh, I mean, not really urgent, some issues, please let me know. Remember, our, my class is very flexible, but perhaps very boring. <laughs> so, okay, your email should be there so that you can see your receipt of uh, answering the question. Metric number. Oh, I didn't put compulsory. You have to put your metric number so that I can grade your mark properly. Some of the students, uh, especially the 8.30 class, they didn't even put their metric number. So it caused me a lot of trouble to trace who is answering the question. Okay, And some of you maybe put your names. I didn't ask about the name. Please read the question carefully. It asks about metric number. Surprisingly, like many people, many students write their names. Okay, So uh, you only have two questions. Very easy one. So the first one is, what types of variable is pounds of popcorn served at a movie theater? Okay, so originally, um, the answers are kind of like uh, a bit confusing. They put interval, ratio, discrete, and continuous. So I'm kind of like scared that you will take ratio because pound, pound of popcorn, perhaps you will see that uh, because pound is like weight, right? So you may put ratio. So I I don't want to make some confusion, even though um, that was the original uh, option. But just to make the quiz easy, so I change it a bit. Okay, so why it is not ratio? Because some of you may say, okay, it should be ratio. Because the question asks what types of variable. It doesn't ask you what level of measurement. Remember, types of variable it can be discrete or continuous. It could be qualitative or quantitative. So interval, nominal, ordinal, and ratio is actually the examples of level of measurement. So I'm scared of some people may get confused, so I remove the answer. Right. Luckily. <laughs> okay. But next quiz, you will see something like a bit confusing. But for those who understood it carefully, so it will not be any problem. Okay. Um. So yeah. So I have answered the question. The variable for Oh, I didn't. What types of variable for pounds of popcorn? So you are measuring the weight of the popcorn. So is it discrete or continuous? 
tell me. So the first two definitely is not the answer because these are the examples of level of measurement. So which one, discrete or continuous? Continuous. Why? Tell me the reason why. It can be this cement, 1.5 pound, pounds. Pounds. For example. Pounds. Yes, yes, yes. So for discrete, you have a, yeah. <laughs> for discrete, you're gonna have a gap like one, and then you jump into two, and then two, three. You don't have something in the middle. So for weight, for um, like pounds or what else? Any scales like um, what else? Any scales? So you have certain uh decimal, right? You're gonna have like perhaps uh. One box of uh, popcorn may have like 1.5 pounds or if let's say the box is even bigger, maybe 5 point something pounds. So when you have a decimal a, a point form, so it is continuous. Okay, clear? You shouldn't get discrete like only one pound and then suddenly jump into two. Sometimes you may have something in the middle like a um, point point form. Okay, clear? Hopefully, no, no, no. I will explain about the interval that you asked in the in the group. Okay, uh, we, let's finish this first, and I'll I will also explain the question asked uh, in the morning class in the eight thirty class, so that everyone will have the same understanding. Okay, so the reported un unemployment is five point five percent of the population. What measurement scales? Can you see this is uh, this question asked about the level of measurement? What measurement scales is used to measure unemployment? They didn't ask you about the types of variable. So you can see the question. So 5.5, what is it? Nominal? Nominal and ordinal is a qualitative variable. So you will never see number. But I will tell you there are some numbers that are new. They are actually falling under ordinal. Okay, so that for now, so these two are actually groups, means that you just classify, okay, maybe I, it's better to start from the beginning. Nominal. Nominal is just you classify the variable into groups, like gender, males or female. You cannot have something in between, right? So uh, color, blue, clearly blue, um, black, or your class, um, you're going to have statistics, business math, accounting, blah, blah, blah. So you have a certain group, you classify them into a group, okay? So there is no discrimination for those who are well uh, in the statistic class so you cannot take any test or whatever so just classify that into group that's it ordinal you still classify the variable into groups but here you kind of have a have an order means that the first group perhaps is better than the second group or first perhaps the first group is worse than the second the second is even lesser worse compared to the third so you have some rank Okay, so um, uh, should I give you the examples of ordinal? Okay, perhaps t-shirt size. So you can say that um, the uh, first size is small and then second is medium. So medium should be bigger than small. And the, the third one is large. So large should be even bigger. So you can see like there is a, a rank order between among the groups, okay? So that is ordinal, even though you just classify them into group, but they have an order. Okay, another examples of uh, um, ordinal. Perhaps you want to uh, rate your lecturer. So the first uh, group, you're going to have certain option for those who wanted to design your questionnaire. So the first, perhaps, um, uh, well, the bottom one, perhaps very poor, and then average, and then good. And next is what, after good? Um, very good. And the, the highest one is uh, Excel or perfect. So you can see the rank. Even though they are a group, you classify the variable into group, but they have, they have a level. Okay. So next, interval and ratio. So the answer for this is definitely um, ratio, right? So let me just explain the, rate, the interval. So many people are confused between interval and ratio. So the only difference between these two are actually zero. Okay, for interval, the zero means something else. For ratio, the zero means the absence of that thing, means that you don't have it. Okay, so for, exam for example, like money or income. 
So if let's say someone said um, my money, my income is zero. So it means that he has no money or no income at all. Okay, it means that the absence of that thing. For interval, the zero here means something else. Like, uh, for example, okay, the, the morning class asked about um, IQ tests. Okay, so they were kind of like, um, uh, what is it? Should, why, why it is interval? So they get confused. Is it ratio or? So they got confused. So, uh, the, okay, so for the test, for the IQ test, you may uh, get, or perhaps for just quiz, okay? Simple, your first quiz. You got the, um, well, quiz, it's better to, yeah. You got zero. So what does it mean? So normally for IQ test, um, uh, it's better to expand IQ test. The IQ test uh, reflects your, uh, whether you have a good IQ level or lower IQ level. So if let's say you got zero uh, IQ test, so does it mean you don't have IQ? Does it mean you don't have brain? So if let's say you put it ratio, it means that you don't have brain at all. You don't have IQ. But zero here means you do have IQ. You do have your brain. It just means something else. It means that you perform very bad in your quiz or in your test. Okay? So that is the uh, the 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 examples of interval. But for ratio, if you got zero, it means that you just don't have it. Okay? You okay, another example is that someone said, I have like zero kids. Is it interval? Zero kids means you really don't have kids. So clear cut. Okay. Okay. So I hope that this question has been explained clearly. Should I get back to your um question just now? What did you ask in the group? Ma'am, uh -huh. yeah, uh, can we have uh, a module question for this fourth thing? Can we have what? Module questions, like uh, more questions about this. Yes, I think, yeah, I think I, first of all, if you go to your iTalim, oh my God, I don't know what happened to the iTalim. This is just an, an announcement. I wanted to post your link in the iTalim, but it wasn't working. So yeah, luckily we have WhatsApp. So uh, the ex if you want to have like um, more exercises, more exercises on the each, each chapter, I have actually posted the question in the iTalim, like exercise and, and extra exercises. If let's say you think that extra exercises doesn't help, you can also, I also have a attached together the textbook. So you can just practice from the textbook, the soft copy textbook. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So you just have to go to your iTalim. Although your iTalim sometimes it's not really uh, stable. Okay. And yeah, it happened today. Okay. So, um, okay. What was your, your, your question in the group? Um, you asked about um, t-shirt size, right? Okay, so no, uh, normally t-shirt size is ordinal. You know that small, medium, large, and extra large, and whatever. So you can see, you can clearly see that they classify into group, the variable into group. The We call it the qualitative variable into group, but then you can see the rank. But sometimes they put it in a, in a measurement, like in number form. So they will put like zero, and then three, and then whatever number. Uh, or certain certain range, so uh, so for those who are because you are not a parent, so you don't know. So zero sometimes for just newly born baby. So zero means that they are just like less than a year. So that's why they put zero. But actually, uh, although they put number, it is still like telling you that they have certain uh certain rank. So we start with zero, like uh, just one baby, and then one year old and then three year old uh, clothes for baby and and so on but sometimes why does it uh, when they put zero why does it fall into interval because interval in the interval we can measure means that we can compute it in the ordinal you cannot compute it somehow it's hard so uh, the, when you have the zero value so uh, so you have to put the variable into intervals or ratio does it mean that you don't have, uh, if let's say this uh, baby baby t-shirt size is zero, does it mean that uh, the clothes is, uh, is invisible? No. There is some clothes, there is a t-shirt, but it is like for a new 
newly born baby. Okay. Okay. But normally by default, when we have like size or different size, it falls under ordinal. But why they put a zero? Because they want to quantify it. They want to compute it. Okay. By default, it is ordinal. But when they really put certain value precisely, and including the zero, it's become interval because they want to analyze it. They want to somehow uh, uh, yeah, quantify it. Okay. Another example. Okay. This is just uh, extra information. So when you design your questionnaire, sometimes the variable can be, uh, we call it, can be, uh, change from nominal into ordinal, ordinal into nominal. So let me just give you an example. If let's say the question asks you, um, what, what is your income? Uh, what is your income per month? So by default, normally when people ask you about income, about your allowance that you receive or earn every month, so what is the answer? Which one? Ratio. 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 But normally, when we want to um, when we want to ask question, we will not simply ask. Uh, okay, by default, it should be ratio. But sometimes the question could be uh, very specific, and they don't want to put it under ratio. So how can the income become non-ratio? It could be ordinal. So this is the example. So when they ask the income, because normally when you design a questionnaire, income will never be a ratio variable. Surprising, right? So why is that? Because it is very offended to ask people straight away, what is your income every month? People will feel like so offended because this is a very sensitive question. They don't want to reveal their income. It reflects their, their current uh, economic status. So what normally we do in the survey, we will ask them to range, like to, we gave them like a few options. So the first option like um, 2000 and below or less than 2,000 ringgit. And second uh, option, second second option, and then 2,001 until perhaps 3,000. And third option, they have 3,001 until 5,000. So you put it in a ordinal form. Got it? So income can be, uh, by default, it should be ratio. If let's say you ask a specific amount, uh, but it could also be ordinal if let's say you put it in a group. So that they don't feel offended. You put it in the group. Okay. And another example other than income, uh, like age. So if let's say you ask, how old are you? So it will become ratio. If let's say the person can say zero, I don't know. I don't think the baby can talk, which is less than a, a, a year. But means that you have like a ratio level. But sometimes the age can also be ordinal. Means that you specify certain range. Like from um, below 18 years old and then 19 until a certain age and so on. So certain variable can somehow be adjusted. Depends on the objective of the researcher. Okay. So don't be so strict like, okay, income should be ratio. Remember, memorize this. No, you have to understand them. So certain students will just memorize. Okay, when I look at um, age, I should be ratio. Income ratio. No, 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 no. You have to see. How do the variable is measured? Okay, is it clear? Yes, madam. Yes, okay. yes. So another, yes madam. Another example. Another example. For example, um, for instance, um, I think it is uh, given in the textbook, like soft drink, okay, or your games like football games or whatever. So soft drink, uh, by default, you when you classify soft drink into Coca Cola, what else? Pepsi, um, um, whatever, Fanta or whatever, you have different types of uh, soft drink. So by default, it should be nominal. But once the question asks you um, uh, your preferred soft drink, so somehow the preferred word shows that you have ordered them and the preferred one is number one. So what is your preferred soft drink? So I prefer Coca-Cola first. And my second... Uh, preference is perhaps um, Pepsi and the least preferred one perhaps whatever so sometimes the variable can be ordered even though it is under nominal okay got it I hope that everything is clear because you need to un understand chapter one to design your questionnaire okay okay so any more question mm, clear so far so good 
Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. If you don't have any question, I perhaps should stop recording. <laughs>